Hello and welcome to the Talkie Indonesia podcast. I'm your host Dave McRae from the University of Melbourne's Asia Institute and today I'll be chatting about big data and citizen privacy with Wayudi Jafar, Deputy Director for Research at the Institute for Policy Research and Advocacy, ELSAN. In contrast to various neighbouring countries and Western democracies, the collection and use of citizens' data remains largely unregulated in Indonesia. Civil society groups are pushing for a private data protection law to be passed, but this will not be in place prior to April's legislative and presidential elections in which political candidates and parties are expected to use big data to more effectively target their campaigns. Today's episode is the second in a series of Policy in Focus episodes of Talking Indonesia, supported by the Knowledge Sector Initiative, or KSI a partnership between the Indonesian and Australian governments that aims to increase the use of evidence in development policy making. These episodes will appear periodically in alternate weeks to the regular Talkie Indonesia episodes. Look out for the Policy and Focus tagline in the episode title to follow the series. Woyodi Jafar, thanks for joining us today. Thank you. Can I start by asking, who are the big players who are collecting Indonesians' private data at present? Yeah, uh, Indonesia has uh, the similar phenomena with the other countries in the world because currently data uh, site as uh, the new oil. So all of the institution in Indonesia compiling data such as the government's institution, uh, the several ministry also compiling data, the private sectors based on the internet technology like e-commerce and also daily life service, Gojek, Grab, etc. And also the new technology company, for example, the fintech financial technology also compiling of the data. What exactly are they collecting and how do they collect it? Yeah, the data related with the human activity and also based on the personal data from people, from the citizens, the address, the name, the contact numbers, compiling by the private sector. For example, social media platform, compiling data based on email and also posting the photos, etc. have the correlation with activities of the people. And is there a strong awareness among Indonesian citizens that large private sector companies and the government are collecting their personal data? Yeah, public awareness is the big challenge for the government and also from civil society in Indonesia to endorse of the public knowledge and also the public awareness. Uh, what is the data or personal data compiling by the government and compiling by the private sector, uh, what is the purpose or the goals from the process of the data compiling and what is the accountability in the process. So would it be fair to say at the moment, we know there are a lot of companies collecting Indonesians' private data, but we don't know exactly what they're collecting and what they're using it for? Yeah, because Indonesia don't have strong regulation to give the obligation or responsibility to the private sectors, even to the government, how to protect data from the citizen. They are also not recognize the procedure or mechanism or we call term of services or term of condition to give the knowledge, to give the education to the customers, how and what is the purpose of the data compiling and what is the procedures and what is the rights of the people if the data are compiled by the private sector or by the government. Uh, For example, the Ministry of Home Affairs compiling private data from the citizen for the project of eKTP or electronic KTP It is uh, the identity card from the citizen in Indonesia. They are compiling all of the private data based on the name, based on address, based on the date of born, and also based on the biometric data from the finger and also from the retina. But the people, they have not the knowledge what is the purpose from the government uh, compiling of the biometric data and what is the models of the security of the data. 
and what is the obligation of the Minister of Home Affairs and also what is the rights of the people while the data compiling by the ministry. Uh, so I think the problem in Indonesia, this Indonesia does not have comprehensive and a strong regulation to protect private data of citizen. It sounds like we have this pretty remarkable amount of data being collected by the Indonesian government, apart from people's basic details, biometric data as well, in a situation where there aren't really very many protections for that data. Have we consequently seen prominent leaks or misuse of that data by various parties? Yeah, even the government misuse personal data from the citizen. The Ministry of Home Affairs released personal identity from the Indonesian activist Veronica Koman in the case of Ahok because the activist challenged the government with the court order in the case of the blasphemy of Ahok. So I think it is the problematic issue because the law in Indonesia give the obligation and mandatory to the government to protect personal data based on the civil administration law in Indonesia. Uh, the private data, the personal data must be protected by the uh, government or by the uh, data controller. So I think it is the problematic issue here. And the other issue, the Indonesian people also has the case uh, with telemarketing or the banking use of the personal data to get the customers, but they get the phone numbers from the other institution without consent from the consumer. So it is also the problematic issue. So we have this situation where the government itself has misused data against its political opponents, where companies are accessing data that they perhaps shouldn't have access mm -hmm. to. Um, you've mentioned the protections for Indonesians' data are not sufficient. Exactly what protections are in place at present? Currently, Indonesia has several law related with the private data protection, but there is no consistent principles or consistent standard based on the LSAM's uh, study. On 2016, we found of the 16 law in Indonesia with the content of the private data protection. For example, the civil administration law related with the people's identity numbers and also the banking law related with consumer of the banking in Indonesia and also in the financial services authority law also mention of the data protection uh, the law related with the health the hospital law and also the doctor law in indonesia also mention personal data protection and the private sectors the government the ministry of ict also release a regulation on personal data protection in electronic system providers but the regulation just in the level of the ministry so difficult in the level of implementation because not all of the corporation or private sector follow the ministerial regulation in the Ministry of ICT. If at present you have these various laws that mm -hmm. don't have a consistent principle uniting them, you've mm -hmm. got uh, a ministerial regulation from the Communication and Information Ministry mm -hmm. that lacks teeth to be enforced. Um, what are you recommending would be a better approach to protecting the data of Indonesian citizens? Actually, we need the strong personal data protection law in comprehensive construction as in countries, for example, Singapore, Malaysia, Philippines, uh, even Australia or Europe, uh, they have the European General Data Protection Regulation. What exactly would the contents of this law be? The law will regulate the issue about what is the definition of private data, what is the scope of the private data, what is the obligation of the data controller and uh, the data processor, and what is the rights of the subject data, and what is the dispute settlement mechanism, and also what is the independent institution will get the function as a regulator and also as a oversight body in the situation of the data breach or a data leaks sure. and also the remedy mechanism to the peoples if they are a private data lost by the private sector or by the government. And who's been involved in formulating this draft law? 
currently prepared by the government, especially in the Ministry of the Communication and Information. Also, based on the multi-stakeholder approach, while GSOs, for example, ELSAM, uh, discuss with the other stakeholders uh, from the government and also from the private sectors, we hope uh, we can minimize issue in the uh, law, not compliance with the personal data principles, because in the process of drafting, in the process of the formulation of the law, we also follow of the several guidelines as data protection principles, for example, several principles in the European Union General Data Protection Regulation, and also Indonesia as a part of the IPEC. IPEC also has the guideline of the personal data, and also in the level of the cooperation or partnership uh, between uh, Indonesia and the other country like G20 also uh, has the several platform how the state will formulation or drafting of the personal data protection law. And there's only a few months left in this parliamentary term mm. in Indonesia. What are the prospects that the law will be passed? The Ministry of Information and Communication has the target. In the end of the February, they will release the bills to the House, to the Parliament. But we have the other obstacle because uh, Indonesia will conduct of the general election on April 2019. Also, Parliament, the members of the House of Representatives, will deliberation of the bills after the general election, uh, maybe in May until September. 2019 because the Commission 1 is uh, responsible of the process of the deliberation of the law in five years uh, period since uh, 2014 until 2019 just released the one product of legislation so uh, we hope they uh, have the moral and ethic obligation to finalize of the law because the parliament and also the government also has the highest interest to finalize of the personal data protection law in several meetings they are said it is important from Indonesia to to, uh, conduct partnership with the other countries or to developing the digital economy in Indonesia because the currently Indonesian governments promote the digital economy with the several platform. Do you expect the deliberation of the bill to be straightforward or is it likely to be quite controversial between the government and the different political parties who will be involved? Yeah, it's a difficult question because uh, the political party also has the different interests between the business sector, even uh, the chase or, or the government. But in the last of the meeting between Elsan and also the House in the Commission one, they are said has the coercion with the law. But of one of the several issue in the topic of the personal data, they are refers to the issue of data exploitation in the several general election in the other countries, uh, for example, in the United States or Kenya or India or uh, UK in the process of the Brexit referendum, and they are also worry if the several political parties. Politician in Indonesia use the method to conduct of the political campaigning. So based on the situation, based on the uh, concern of the parliament members with the issue of the data, we hope they also has the highest interest to accelerate the process of the deviation of the law because they also need to protect their political interests. You mentioned, uh, obviously, there'll be the business sector lobbying, um, the parliament, uh, there's uh, CSOs and academics. Um, are there very different positions between the different stakeholders on this data protection law? I think uh, currently in the business sector in Indonesia is follow the GDPR content or European General Data Protection Regulation because uh, the business sector in Indonesia also uh, has the interest to developing their business uh, partnership with the other countries to get consumers from the European region and the other regions in the world. So uh, I think the business sector has the interest with the law because the law try to comply with the AU GDPR. But in the level of the government, several of the ministries, especially in the Minister of Home Affairs, are reluctant with the law because they are said they are has the self regulation to uh, regulate their activities. For example, while the Minister of Home Affairs compiling of the private data from the citizen, they are following the civil administration law. So uh, they are said not 
urgent to calibration of the personal data protection uh, law because they have the law. And the other uh, ministry, for example, the coordinating ministry of the political uh, law and security, they said about the data sovereignty, the, about data localization uh, of the data center in the issue of the jurisdiction, etc. So I think it is also the part of the debate of the deliberation of the law. Now, you mentioned that uh, members of parliament should have an interest in passing a data mm. protection law. Um, because we've seen the various cases where people's data has been harvested and used uh, to influence elections in mm-hmm. other countries. Mm-hmm. Um, have we seen anything similar in Indonesia? Um, are we seeing political parties or candidates uh, harvesting data and, and using it to design their campaigns? Yeah, last year, El Sam conduct of the preliminary study to uh, compiling of the statement of the uh, political parties or political party leaders how the uh, knowledge or their understanding to use data-driven political campaigns in the election process. And the result of the research, several uh, political parties, for example, Golkar, the uh, public stated use of the big data as strategy to the winning of the election. Yeah, for example, uh, Mr. Bambang Susetio, the chair of the House of Representatives and also as a senior a politician in the Gold Color Party, and the bulk of the personal data based on social media user in their uh, electorate and they uh, got of a 900,000 a profile of the social media user uh, and based on the data Bambang Susetio will conduct of the uh, political micro targeting or sending the political message uh, or political campaign uh, based on the uh, social media con and Golkar uh, party chair Mr uh, Erlangga Hartarto also said uh, Golkar will use political micro targeting as a strategy to winning the 2019 election in Indonesia. The other party, for example, PDIP and also uh, Democrat, uh, even uh, PBB, uh, Partai Bulan Bintang, also use political uh, ads based on social media to disseminating of the political message. Is all of that legal within the Indonesian uh, electoral system? Are there any regulations governing the harvesting of social media data and its use for micro-targeting? Yeah, it is the problematic issue because the General Election Commission regulation or the General Election Oversight Body regulation, they are not mention of the issue of the data exploitation based on social media or how to use the political ads based on algorithm uh, models on the social media. And the regulation just uh, mention about use of the official social media account from uh, political parties or from the team of the campaign from the candidate and uh, register to the general election commission and they are conduct of a uh, campaign use of the social media account but they are not mentioned based on uh, algorithm system in social media so the regulation regulates only the content of the social media accounts and that they need to be yeah. registered with the election yeah, commission yeah, rather yeah. than uh, what data they're harvesting and how they're using yeah, it to yeah, target yeah, people yeah. And the harvest of the data also not only based on the social media users because we also have the problem with the law related to the electoral rules or in Indonesia, uh, DPT, Daftar Pemilih Tetap. Uh, the civil administration law in Indonesia recognize the electoral rules uh, with the content of the personal data of the people as a secret data. Only the uh, Minister of Home Affairs or the other ministry with the uh, public services interests can have the access to the data. But the general election law in Indonesia uh, said uh, the political parties also can open uh, electoral rules with the content of the personal data of the peoples in Indonesia. Uh, it is also the problem between the civil administration law, even the uh, information and electronic transaction law, not similar uh, principles with the general election law. Uh, I think it is also the new issue in the other country, uh, even in UK, US 
US or in Australia because uh, Australia after the uh, amendment of the personal data protection law also have the strongest of the uh, general election law related with the how the general election commission will protect the electoral rules just can access in the general election commission office but uh, the political party cannot access all of the data from electoral rules because there is no clear identity from the political party as a data controller or political party as a data processor. There is no obligation for a political party. It's interesting to hear you talking about you know parties like the former Sahara regime party Golka and now talking about uh, micro-targeting using social media data um, because the picture we've had of campaigning for the legislative elections in Indonesia has been one of candidates largely financing their own campaigns um, because apart from competing with candidates from other parties um, in Indonesia's multi-member electorates, they're actually competing as well against people from their own party too. Um, are we seeing individual candidates, therefore, using big data to target their campaigns, or is this really something that's only happening at party level? It is depend of the financial support of the candidate. When the individual candidate have the biggest financial support, they can uh, access or use the big data strategy to uh, conduct political campaigns. Uh, for example, Mr. Bambang Susetyo, he have the strong uh, financial support, so they can get the data and conduct political uh, micro-targeting use of the social media platform. But mostly uh, individual candidate in Indonesia dependent to the facilitating from the political uh, party, uh, for example, gold cards, facilitating the candidate uh, based on the electorate to release of the uh, political message uh, use of the social media platform. Beyond political parties, the presidential election will be on the same day as the legislative election. Are we seeing either the Jokowi or the Prabowo mm -hmm. camp using big data for micro-targeting as well? Actually, it is very open to the presidential candidate Prabowo or Jokowi use of the big data in the political campaign. Uh, it is also refer the statement from their political or campaign team uh, of the candidate, for example, uh, Mardani Alisera uh, refer as the campaigning uh, team of the Prabowo side will use of the big data strategy to winning of the presidential election or from the other side, Jokowi's team also have the similar statement to use of the big data to get the winners of the election. I think it is uh, very open from the candidate to use of the strategy, but until now we don't have the information who are the political consultant used by the candidate to conduct big data strategy in the political campaign. We've seen Jokowi himself accuse his opponent of using Russian propaganda mm -hmm. uh, within the election campaign. I guess highlighting a polarizing effect of online campaigning. Is there a risk in the use of big data that the election will be more polarizing than it would have otherwise been? Yeah, the Russian propaganda is a term of the concept of how to use several techniques of propaganda to spread the political message. Uh, it is also based on experience in several country use of the models in the process of the election from uh, the US or Kenya, while well, the candidate spread disinformation content with the hawks or fake news based on data profiling to the footers and I think it opens in Indonesia because uh, after the 2004 general election and the local uh, general election on 2016 and 17, so many uh, disinformation content in Indonesia and based on the experience from other countries, the disinformation content has the correlation with the big data strategy. So based on the big data, the candidates will conduct of the data profiling or profiling of the footers and based on the result of the profilings, the disinformation will spread to the footers. Does that mean that we should be seeing the use of big data in Indonesian elections as a negative factor for the quality of democracy or are there advantages as well in having political candidates, political parties using this big data for their campaigns? 
I think it is the dual situation in the one side, the people's, the big data as the innovation or the new strategy in the process of the political campaigns. But in the uh, other side, this is also the threat or challenge to the democratic process in Indonesia because the big data also have the intercorrelation with the increasing of the disinformation content during the political election based on the data profiling of the voters. So the situation has the impacts, the people's worry to use of the voter rights in the process of the election. And this as the factors of the increasing of people's abstaining in the footing uh, process. I think in UK also has the similar situation, the people's abstaining in the footing uh, process because uh, the people in UK worry to give private data as a mandate of the registering of the footers because they are worried uh, the political party will conduct of the profilings. In, in Indonesia, currently also uh, the increasing of the, the groups abstaining in the footing process but with others argumentation it is the new issue but in indonesia big data give the impacts to the footers maybe in the future they are worried to give the private data to the registering process of the election because they are worried the political party will use the private data to conduct profiling in the future or the next election but currently the issue of private or uh, individual political message from the candidate to the footers it is also threatened democracy because there is no solidarity uh, from the footers to demanding of the political commitment from the political candidate or political party because each footers get the different uh, political message from the political leaders or from the political party. So there is no similar political commitment from them to the footers. So uh, people have to advocate individually to ask politicians to fulfill those promises rather than doing it collectively. Yeah. Yeah. Now, finally, you've mentioned there isn't a private data protection law. The Indonesian Electoral Commission regulations don't really regulate the use of data in campaigning. Um, Is there anything that individual Indonesian citizens can do to protect their data, stop themselves from being micro-targeted if this is something they're worried about heading into the election? So uh, for the individual footers in Indonesia to protect privacy from political micro-targeting or the political message from the political party, they can change the privacy setting in their social media platform because all of the social media platform, uh, for example, Facebook, Instagram, uh, Twitter, or YouTube, uh, provide several choice of the privacy setting. Apart from Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, of course, we know uh, WhatsApp is huge in Indonesia. What about WhatsApp users? Is is that also a risk for micro-targeting? And is there anything people can do to prevent that? For the individual footers, I think not to synchronize of the platform in the smartphone, for example, between WhatsApp, Instagram, and Facebook because they are provided by the same company. So uh, I think it is the good choice against political micro-targeting because if the users synchronize of the platform based on the algorithm echo chambers uh, platform in their uh, platform, they can uh, deliver the message to all of the social media platform. And also based on the experience on the United States general election, the third parties in the platform uh, look like quiz in Facebook. It is also the method for the data brokers to compiling of the private data from the users and based on the data profiling, they are deliver of the message. So less synchronization, less quizzes. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, Pat Oyudi, thanks so much for sharing your insights with us today. There's a lot more I could ask, but I'm afraid we're well and truly out of time. My pleasure. Thank you. That was Wayudi Jafar, Deputy Director for Research at the Institute for Policy Research and Advocacy, ILSUM. Keep an eye out for the Policy and Focus tagline in future Talking Indonesia episodes to follow the series. Policy and Focus episodes are edited by Eric Van Bemmel and Kelvin Paran. Talking Indonesia returns on 28 February with my co-host Dr. Charlotte Setiabi. 
Until then, as always, you can listen to the entire archive of Talking Indonesia episodes at the Indonesia at Melbourne blog or via your favourite podcasting app. Until next time, this has been the Talking Indonesia podcast. Bye for now. Thank you.